name is Tim Curley, and I serve as chair of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to welcome you to CGU's 97th Commencement Ceremony. I now ask Chief Marshal Pick to please place the university mace. And will the faculty and platform party please remain standing? <laughs> and will the banner carriers please place your banners and return to your seats? Thank you. Yeah, why not? In recognition of the diverse faith communities represented at CGU, we, we invite a member of the Claremont College's chaplains to deliver the commencement invocation. This honor rotates among the four chaplains, and if the audience will please stand, I would like to call upon the Muslim Interfaith Chaplain of the Claremont Colleges, Imam Hadi Kazwini, to deliver this year's invocation. Please stand. Distinguished trustees, administrators, and faculty, esteemed graduates and students, and cherished families and friends, I greet you all with the Muslim greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum, and may God's peace and blessings be with you all. As we gather here today in celebration of this momentous occasion, we are filled with pride as we witness the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance. To the graduating class of 2024, congratulations. Your achievements, Your achievements serve as a testament to your resilience and determination, and we commend you for reaching this significant milestone. Yet as we celebrate, we cannot ignore the challenging times we find ourselves in. Our world is marred by division and devastation. The ongoing Israeli-Palestinian crisis, which has cost tens of thousands of innocent lives, devastated entire communities, and led to a horrific humanitarian disaster, this crisis serves as a distressing reminder of the enduring pain and suffering experienced by so many, including our own communities here in Claremont. As we stand on the threshold of new beginnings, we are called to acknowledge the profound impact of this conflict on human lives and the urgent need for enduring peace and restorative justice. In the face of such adversity, we are reminded of our collective responsibility to foster understanding, empathy, and solidarity. Therefore, let us commit ourselves to three steps towards addressing this challenge. First, let us cultivate a culture of dialogue and mutual respect. By engaging in open, honest, and especially difficult conversations, not only by speaking, but also by listening, we can open the way to bridge divides, challenge stereotypes, and build bridges of understanding between communities. In the words of the late South African bishop and activist Desmond Tutu, quote, if you want peace, you don't talk to your friends, you talk to your enemies, end quote. Second, let us advocate for justice, freedom, and dignity for all people. 
Justice cannot be just us. Malcolm X once said, quote, I'm for truth no matter who tells it. I'm for justice no matter who it's for or against, end quote. We must stand in solidarity with those who suffer injustice and oppression, whomever they be and wherever they are, and work tirelessly to promote equality, dignity, and peace for all. And last, let us never underestimate the power of compassion and empathy. The Prophet Muhammad once exhorted a group of his followers to think of themselves as a single body and to feel empathy for one another in the same way that an entire body feels the pain of one of its ailing limbs. In a world often characterized by indifference and apathy, let us strive to be agents of love and compassion, reaching out to those in need and offering our support and solidarity in, the in their time of struggle. Finally, as we commence this ceremony and reflect on the past few years and the journey ahead, let us lift our hearts in prayer, seeking guidance, strength, and wisdom for the road ahead. May we be blessed with courage to confront challenges, grace to extend compassion, and resilience to persevere in our pursuit of peace and reconciliation. May we be guided by the values of love, compassion, and respect. May we never lose sight of our shared humanity, and may we continue to work tirelessly toward, towards a world where peace, dignity, and justice prevail for all. Congratulations once again to the graduating class of 2024. May your present and future be filled with hope, joy, and fulfillment. Amen. I would now ask everyone to please be seated. And it is my pleasure to introduce the president of Claremont Graduate University, Len Jessup, who will conduct our commencement ceremony. Len? OK, here we go. Thank you, Tim. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and students of Claremont Graduate University, now it's my turn to, to wish congratulations to our class of 2024. Way to go. For many of you, this day marks the attainment of a dream. It might be a vital stepping stone for career advancement or even the launch of a new career. It might open the door to postdoc work or perhaps a coveted position in academe. It might be a new adventure for you now in industry or in government or the arts. And as in my case, it, must, it might signify that you are the first in your family to earn a graduate degree. For all of you, at some point, or at maybe many points along your journey, it required courage to see your way through to this day. And indeed, the theme for this year's commencement is having the courage, an inspiring topic that our keynote speaker, Dr. Jennifer Fried, will explore a little later. I think it's safe to say that along with possessing courage, you were sustained and supported during your studies here at CGU by other people. Perhaps it was a spouse or a significant other or a mentor, a friend, a faculty member, or just a colleague, a classmate who had your back. We can all think of critical moments when someone made all the difference in our lives. And in fact, I'd like to ask our graduates to stand up and find here in the audience that special person and offer them a round of thanks and applause. Please. Well done. Well done, love the big heads. <laughs> I can say with certainty that I would not be standing here today if not for several very special people in my life, family, friends, coaches, teachers, professors, all mentors in one way or another. It's been a terrific 35 years since I sat out in your seats graduating with my PhD from the University of Arizona. 
Through persistence and good fortune, I've been privileged to spend the last 20 years in leadership roles like the one that I'm in now. And you may have heard that I too am graduating. I'm wrapping up my presidency and moving into my next chapter in life. I've been so incredibly lucky to have spent the past six years working with you all here at this incredible university, this nearly 100-year-old experiment in transformational graduate education. And what an experience it has been. What an amazing institution with outstanding people. I'm so blessed and lucky. Thank you all. And graduates, I'll be following you out into the world and celebrating your accomplishments on social media. Tag me if you get a chance. <laughs> I need to give you a heads up. When you arrive at your next destination, you might experience what I and nearly everybody else on the stage behind me, I'm sure, has experienced at one time or another. Behavioral experts call it imposter syndrome. When I started my PhD program at Arizona, and at a couple of other stops along the way throughout my career, it gnawed on me from time to time, that feeling of, am I good enough? Do I have what it takes to succeed? Do I have what it takes to really make a difference? I was able to push aside those self-doubts, sometimes quickly and sometimes not so quickly. Typically had to lean into experience, intelligence, instincts, or friends, leaning heavily on friends often, and persisting in the face of whatever the difficulty was. And then small steps eventually grew into large ones. Your keys to success to slaying the imposter syndrome dragon might differ from mine, but you'll find them, I'm sure. I'm confident that your time at CGU and the relationships that you've built here will help greatly, especially the relationships. You've studied, you've grown, you've achieved a lot here together with this group of incredible students and faculty and staff, and they'll be there for you to help you to thrive, and more to the point, to be more confident in your ability to thrive. And here's another way that I think this day is special. You might not know it, but you as a group are making history because today, technically speaking, this is the final commencement of CGU's first century because next year we're gonna turn 100 years old. That's, that's amazing, think about that for a minute. Our first classes began in 1925. We later marked our first commencement in 1928 with a class of just four master's graduates. Let's just take a, a moment and celebrate that class. <laughs> Jerry Voorhees in education, Eloise Sterling, and Marjorie Bell Travers in English composition, and Wiley Mels Mather in political science. So just for a, indulge for a moment. Jerry Voorhees went on to found a school for boys. He served in Congress and he helped lay the groundwork for, for what later became Cal Poly Pomona. Eloise Sterling was a speech and drama teacher as well as the charter member of the Community Players of Pasadena, the forerunner to the Pasadena Playhouse. Marjorie Bell Travers <clears throat> made her, uh, married Ralph Harold French in 1933. The Santa Ana Register newspaper reported that when they returned from their honeymoon, their friends honored them with a surprise party at the Orange County Little Theater Guild, where Marjorie was the director. And we're getting a founder theme here. <laughs> Wiley Wells Mather passed the bar without a law degree, long before coming to CGU, and then taught thousands of Chafee High School and college students during his decade-long career. I've never stopped learning, he said, which explained why he attended lectures well into his 90s. We at CGU talk proudly about carrying the flame, making the world a better place through our passion for knowledge and commitment to others. And so Jerry and Eloise and Marjorie and Wiley, they lit that flame. And generations of CGU graduates have followed. Amazing stories, our first graduating class. Today, you become heirs to that legacy and to carrying the flame. Carry it well, and I know you will. Congratulations. Okay, now it's time to turn our attention to a very special and unique commencement tradition, the presentation of the Pamela M. Mullen Dream and Believe Award, which recognizes a PhD student not only for their notable success, but also for the way they have embraced challenges and overcome obstacles in the pursuit of their degree here with us. Pam Mullen and her children created the Dream and Believe Award 24 years ago with a generous endowment gift to the university. Pam was a longtime member of our Board of Trustees, a shining light in the community, and an exemplar of stewardship. She's done 
a lot philanthropically throughout the Los Angeles Basin. The Dream and Believe Award here honors her memory in the inspiring way that she approached her life. This award provides a very generous stipend to a continuing doctoral student, it basically sets them up to not have to worry about their finances for their following year. It enables that student to follow their dream and to have a positive impact on the world. And what makes this award truly special is that the recipient, someone who richly deserves the recognition, does not know that they're about to receive this award. So as you might expect, it's a bit of a surprise. It can be a life-changing, life-affirming, and, and, and shocking moment uh, for the student. Members of the Mullen family couldn't be here today because they're at a, another commencement for one of their children. So I'm going to ask one of our incredible deans, DeLacy Ganley, from the School of Educational Studies, to have the honor of announcing the recipient. DeLacy? Thank you, President Jessup. This year's recipient of the Dream and Believe Award is an exemplar in their profession, a lifelong learner, innovator, and advocate for the underserved who empowers others through his actions. It is my privilege to invite to the stage doctoral student and 2023 California Teacher of the Year, Jason Torres Wrangle. advisor from the School of Educational Studies, Professor Francis Gibson, to join us. So, so Jason, the ruse was that you were going to give a speech honoring Francis. I have a whole speech. <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend, are the centerpiece. Congratulations. Oh, Jason, come a little closer. I've known him since his first year as a teacher. Jason, JTR, in recognition of your passion for teaching students from diverse backgrounds and inspiring in each of them a sense of purpose, you embrace the superb example set by your parents who during their teaching careers understood education as a tool for justice. They helped hundreds, if not thousands, of students in East LA pursue their dreams. Your commitment to collaboration among teachers and researchers to robustly explore and discover difference-making practices, your willingness to grow as a practitioner scholar exemplified by your PhD studies at CGU, make you a paragon of lifelong learning and a role model to so many of us in this profession. Your genuine, genuine humility, combined with an unwavering advocacy for the underserved and the marginalized. Your ability to guide and mentor students and educating leaders of all ages and backgrounds is a rare ability that was recognized in you being named California's Teacher of the Year for 2023. <laughs> for the inspiration that you provide to us all here at Claremont Graduate University, we are pleased and honored to present you with the 2024 Pamela M. Mullen Dream and Believe Award, an award recognizing that dreams, in addition to learning, knowledge, and wisdom, truly matter. Jason, JTR, we are so honored to recognize you with this year's Dream and Believe Award. We now invite you to briefly share your thoughts, not your speech about me, with all of us. Congratulations. Oh 
what? What the heck? You guys, literally, I have a speech about Dr. G written. They totally lied to me. We were creative writers. Yeah, right. Um, I, I literally speechless. I don't know what to say, but um, I, I love graduations as a public school educator of 20 years. Um, I hear pop in circumstance and I start weeping. Um, so it, it's so inspiring to see um, so much brilliant and wisdom gathered here. Um, but I think what makes it even more special is like, I wish you could see what I'm seeing is literally, it's like the graduates in the center and every, all the families and community are like wrapping the grads in like a big bear hug. Um, bear the man, we want the bear in this case. Um, but that's like a young TikTok thing. I'm t honestly too old, too old for that. Um, but I, I, I'm speechless. Um, for all of you going into education, into research, um, stay strong, stay confident, um, stay true to what you know is right in your gut, even when the powers that be around you are using all the powers in their might to cut you down and knock you down and, and question, make you question yourself. Know that you have what it takes and you are on the right path. Thank you so much, CGU. I, I'm literally speechless. Wow, I love that. We pulled off the surprise. Jason, well done with the impromptu remarks. That was pretty good. Now I want to hear the, the actual written speech. We'll do it later. Anyway, thank you to Lacey and Francis and Jason. And again, Jason, con congratulations. The Mullen family believes in you. CGU believes in you. The many students' lives who you have touched throughout your, your decades of teaching, California Teacher of the Year, your many accomplishments in the pursuit of lifelong learning show that you've never stopped dreaming and believing. You're an inspiration and a very deserving recipient of this award. You've made the commencement ceremony even more memorable and personal. And trust me, when you see what's coming your way, you're gonna to wanna to thank the Mullins. I'll put, I'll put you in touch. Once again, let's congratulate Jason Torres Rangel, J-T-R. As I noted earlier, the theme for this year's commencement is having the courage. The courage to be present, daring, consistent, and authentic when taking on new challenges and laying the foundation for progress. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Jennifer Fried, embodies what it means to be courageous. Over the course of her impressive academic career, she has charted new paths of research that have revolutionized the field of trauma psychology and the practice of institutional community building. An internationally recognized and award-winning expert on sexual violence and trauma psychology, Dr. Fried has contributed influential concepts, theories, research, uh, including betrayal trauma theory, institutional betrayal, and the notion of institutional courage. It has been both a profoundly personal and professional journey for her, but most of all, it has been a human-centered journey focusing on improving the lives of others. Her list of accomplishments is many. It's a stellar career in academia over 30 years, professor of psychology at University of Oregon, now at the University of Washington. Groundbreaking research into sexual abuse and memory, betrayal trauma, abuser response, institutional betrayal and institutional courage. She's been named a Guggenheim Fellow, an Erksein Fellow, and a Fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Earlier this year, she received the American Psychological Foundation's Gold Medal Award for Impact in Psychology. 
giving her recognition for her innovative and transformational work. She shared her expertise at the White House with the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, and she's the founder of, and president of the Center for Institutional Courage, saying, we want nothing less than to change the world. Graduates, family, friends, and our other guests, it's my great honor to welcome this year's commencement speaker, Dr. Jennifer Fry. Thank you for inviting me to join your community celebration of the inspiring achievements of graduating students. I love your commencement theme, Having the Courage. While we often think of courage as an individual quality, today I want to talk to you about the importance and the joy of creating institutional courage. It takes personal courage to challenge institutions to do better. It takes courage to try to change the world, and there are no guarantees, but when it is successful, it can be immensely satisfying. I will also need to say something about the pain of institutional betrayal, which is when an institution harms those dependent on it. Institutional betrayal happens when institutions choose not to be courageous. Extensive research has revealed that betrayal trauma such as abuse by someone the victim trusts and depends on, is deeply harmful. Furthermore, when people experience institutional betrayal, that harm is seriously magnified with lasting psychological and practical consequences. Research also reveals that when institutions act courageously, they can reduce all that harm. I want to describe to you today the events that led me to come up with the concept of institutional courage. The story is not one you likely have heard before, even if you know something about my past encounters with betrayal and courage. Ten years ago this month, I was called into the office of the then president of the University of Oregon, where I was a professor. When I walked into his office, he told me that he and several other senior administrators who were also present wanted my advice on how to handle a crisis that had erupted on campus two days earlier. The crisis was one that might sound familiar, as crises like these have erupted on many campuses. The front page of the newspaper featured an allegation of sexual assault involving three men on the basketball team assaulting a woman student athlete two months earlier. It appeared the university had been aware of the allegations for those two months, enabling the players to go with their team to the NCAA championship tournament. The newspaper included a link to the police report filed back in March. It was full of very disturbing details. When students found out about this, many felt the university had prioritized reputation and athletics over justice and student safety. The students quickly organized demonstrations advocating for a rape-free campus and institutional accountability. When I was handed a bullhorn by the protesting students and asked a comment, I suggested the university needed to act with institutional courage. The new phrase just rolled out of my mouth. At the meeting in his office, the UO president asked me what I thought he should do in the face of the campus protests. Be brave, I heard myself tell him. Get on top of this and take responsibility. Pledge to fix the system and then do it. I also suggested that he authorize a campus survey to find out what was going on regarding interpersonal violence and related issues. Only with accurate information can institutions take care of the people dependent on them. I explained that a White House task force had recently recommended such a survey be administered on every college campus and that I had coincidentally just compiled a model surgery at the request of a U.S. Senator. The UO president seemed ready to accept my advice regarding the survey. I said my students and I could take on the job as soon as possible but would need a small amount of funding to pay survey participants for their time. I left the meeting with assurances we had a plan. But a few days later, I learned that the project was quashed. 
A reporter from the local city paper asked the administration to explain. The next morning, while having my first cup of coffee, I read that an administrator had told the reporter they canceled the survey because I had, quote, confirmation bias. I was flabbergasted and hurt and angry. University administrators do not generally publicly discredit their faculty, especially widely published senior professors. By the time I was on my second cup of coffee, the emails and phone calls from colleagues and students expressing dismay were pouring in. I wondered about why these administrators, who were not experts in this topic, would do this. And then it dawned on me. During all this period, the press had been eager to get my opinion. I had been honest in my response, including in a live interview on ESPN. Was the quote confirmation bias they had in mind actually due to my criticism of the university's handling of the rape allegation? Or rather, was it simply fear about what our survey might reveal? What my university did in canceling the survey and retaliating against me was institutional betrayal. Their actions were harmful to me, harmful to my graduate students, harmful to survivors of sexual assault, and harmful to the cause of addressing sexual violence and therefore working toward meaningful equity. Even without the university's support, my graduate students and I resolved to run the survey. We cared about our campus and knew data would help. That summer, we quickly raised the funds needed and worked long days to collect responses from a representative sample of approximately 1,000 students. By the fall, we were giving presentations on campus, explaining in detail our methodology and presenting our findings of high rates of sexual violence and related problems. By then, the president of the university had resigned. Although no one from the administration acknowledged the attack on my credibility, the interim president did tell a reporter that the university was, quote, lucky to have me. This was followed by a commitment from his office to fund a second survey administered for my, from my lab, including funds for my graduate students' efforts. Combined, the two surveys had a powerful positive effect at the university. They helped dispel the denial about the rates of victimization on campus, break through entrenched betrayal blindness, and also provide specific information about which students were most vulnerable. Facts matter. Truth matters. It took courage for the protesting students to get the attention of the university administration. And it took courage for my graduate students and for me to do the research in the face of attacks by our employer. But in the end, it has been a source of personal satisfaction, meaning, and joy for many of us. The two surveys ultimately also led to a series of peer-reviewed research articles first authored by my graduate students. We showed how speaking truth to power, good solid research, and standing up to attempts to thwart that research can help create a better world. And that means something. The university's cover-up of the rape allegations constituted institutional betrayal. The retaliation against me constituted institutional betrayal. Institutional courage involves institutions acting with accountability, with transparency, actively seeking justice, and making changes where needed, despite unpleasantness, risk, and short-term costs. Funding the second survey and engaging in the campus changes that followed, those were acts of institutional courage. I hope you will not be in exactly the same situation in your own life. However, I know that you will have analogous situations where you will meet resistance for doing what is right, but where you, new graduates from the Claremont Graduate School, can decide to be courageous. When you see injustice in your institutions, such as your employers or community organizers, you can take action. When you have a chance to meet with lawmakers, you can speak difficult truths. Armed with knowledge and your own courage, you have the tools and the power to create a future where institutions act courageously. Your efforts will be challenging at times, but not impossible. On the website for the Center for Institutional Courage, we have outlined 11 practical steps to promote institutional courage. Finding others to collaborate with you is hugely beneficial. In my own life, I have been able to be courageous through solidarity with my students, friends, family, and colleagues. 
I hope you support your peers when you see them be courageous. You will have to pick your battles, and you will not win every one of them. But in the long run, if you keep at it, you will make the world better, and doing the right thing will likely bring you meaning, satisfaction, and joy. You're entering a new world with new credentials. You have the ability to shape that world for the better. Congratulations, graduates. All right, thank you, Dr. Fried. Inspiring and uh, timely. And you're, you're honor us today with your presence here, and we'll be honoring her a little later in the program, so hang on. Next, it is time for this year's student speaker. First, however, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge our graduate student council officers who do so much to improve the quality of life of their fellow students. Will the members of the GSE who are in attendance please stand? I know we've got joining us on the stage President Steve Flores. In the guest area assisting with today's ceremony, we've got Vice President Marklam Hernandez, I see him down there, and Treasurer Vaishnavi Mansudar, where is V? Yes, there she is. And then Secretary Oscar Guerrero, who is graduating today. There's Oscar. <laughs> Job, Oscar. Thank you all for your service this academic year. And in a moment, I'll ask President Steve Flores to introduce this year's student speaker. But first, let me just say a little bit about Steve. Steve Flores is a proud son of immigrants and a first-generation Latino PhD student in the School of Educational Studies. His research explores the Latinx college student experience as it intersects with citizenship status, college access, and the sense of belonging in higher education. As our Graduate Student Council president, Steve's connected students with alumni in partnership with the Alumni Association. He's increased student leadership opportunities, and he's advocated on, uh, successfully on behalf of CGU's diverse student body. Steve, it's a pleasure to have to introduce you as our student, or have you introduce our student speaker. Sorry, Steve, get up here. <laughs> Thank you, President, Mr. President. And congratulations, class of 2024. <laughs> to say our student commencement speaker is impressive would be an understatement. Dr. Jennifer Villalobos has more than 20 years of experience in the field of research, evaluation, and organizational psychology with local, national, and international clients spanning multiple industries. She is passionate about positive psychology, social justice, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. She pursued her dissertation on exploring the relationship between social justice, evaluation, and psychological capital, while also finding time to cheer on her three teenage children in theater, marching band, football, and swimming. Jennifer has been married to her best friend for more than 17 years and loves attending sporting events, concerts with him and their children. As an adjunct professor, she co-taught a class with President Jessup, and she has since accepted a faculty position at CGU as assistant professor within Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences. Congratulations. <laughs> Earlier this year, she defended her dissertation, and this morning, she will be receiving her PhD in evaluation and positive organizational psychology. I am honored to introduce our student speaker, Dr. Jennifer Villalobos. Thank you, esteemed faculty administration, and wonderful staff of the CGU community. Thank you also to the proud parents, devoted families, and many friends who have supported and championed us throughout our CGU journeys. How proud I am to stand here today, a representative of several communities, as a woman, a first-generation Mexican-American, <laughs> and like many of you, someone who had the courage to start a doctoral program as a working wife and parent. 
Maya Angelou said, courage is the most important of all virtues because without it, you can't practice the others. In positive psychology, courage is a character strength that umbrellas other strengths like bravery, perseverance, honesty, and zest. I especially like this notion of zest as living with energy, enthusiasm, and commitment. There's a line from a movie called We Bought a Zoo that says, you know, all you need sometimes is 20 seconds of insane courage, just literally 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery, and I promise you something great will come of it. I quote this often to my children when they're about to experience something new. In fact, I just told it to myself as I came up here. <laughs> this idea of insane courage is a feel-good heuristic for approaching scary situations. And still, it doesn't fully reflect the courage that Maya Angelou describes, or more importantly, the courage that you all tapped during your CGU journeys. Thinking about these different ways of conceptualizing courage reminds me of a reflection I wrote one night as I struggled to remain energized during a long stretch of dissertation writing. I'd like to share it with you. The road to a PhD is grueling, by far the most challenging feat I've undertaken. Between portfolio requirements, years of coursework, lit reviews, oral exams, and dissertation research, it truly is a test of psychological and emotional resilience. During this journey, you sometimes feel like an academic imposter and like you don't belong. And there are moments when you regret thinking that you could do it. Add to that those long hours of isolation during the final months of dissertation work. Yet, there is no path that ends in quitting for me, not after the sacrifices made by my people that afforded me the great privilege of earning this degree. As I write this, I think about how the challenges of my doctoral journey pale in comparison to that of my grandparents, father, and other family as they left everything they knew in Mexico for the American dream. The bravery to come to a new country with no money, no education, no familiarity with the English language, and no welcome. I imagine taking the lowest paying work as their only option must have made them feel like they didn't belong. How imposter-like they felt not knowing American norms or language how incredibly isolating it must have been navigating an entirely new way of living in a foreign home. Surely there were moments of regret thinking they could do it, and yet for them, no path ended in quitting. To me, this is genuine courage, and regardless of your unique journey, the fact that you made it here today is a powerful testament to your courage. Despite challenges and moments of self-doubt, you demonstrated incredible power to rise above adversity and succeed. You inspire me. As we move forward to new adventures, we may have reasons to lose that zest that brought us here today. My firm conviction, however, is that our CGU education not only imparted knowledge and skills, but broadened our courageous selves, enabling us to thrive and positively impact the world. Congratulations to you all. Salud. Great job, Jen. As Steve said, Jen and I got to build and teach a course together and publish an article together. Jennifer, thank you. I look forward to our future projects. Inspiring words from both Jen and Jennifer today, both uh, perfect, timely, spot on. This morning we follow one of the great traditions of the university, conferral of an honorary degree upon an individual whose achievements inspire and guide us. This individual will receive the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in recognition of her significant accomplishments which have enriched our understanding of the world and helped us see it in a new light. Will Jennifer Fried please step forward for conferral of the honorary degree, and will board chair Tim Curley and provost Michelle Bly please assist. Follow that, follow that. 
And to present this year's honorary degree, I will call on Kat Pick, Chair of the Faculty, to assist. Dr. Jennifer J. Fried, your passion for living and leading with courage and your commitment to cultivating more positive organizational cultures have advanced individual agency and strengthened the building blocks of society. As an educator and researcher, you have opened new vistas of inquiry in the field of trauma psychology, including your theories on betrayal trauma, institutional betrayal, and institutional courage. Throughout your career, you have unflinchingly explored the human experience with candor and grace, while at the same time inspiring future generations of academics to chart their own paths. As an author of three books and more than 200 papers and opinion pieces, you have prompted conversations and research among your peers, but as important, informed public discussion of topics important to a functioning society including the concept of DARVO, an aggressive strategy that perpetrators use to attack a victim's credibility. By highlighting this destructive response, you have helped reframe important national conversations about assault and betrayal. As a leader in your field, you have earned recognition as a John Simon Guggenheim Fellow and a Fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. You have been awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation, the Christine Blasey Ford Woman of Courage Award by the Association for Women in Psychology, and a Gold Medal Award for Impact in Psychology from the American Psychological Foundation. As a visionary, you founded the Center for Institutional Courage in 2020, laying the groundwork for a society in which transparency and justice can trump betrayal. Dr. Jennifer J. Fried, because of your academic accomplishments and influence in the field of psychology, notably your groundbreaking research in the areas of institu institutional betrayal, betrayal trauma, and DARVO, because of your steadfast pursuit of truth and justice, and your unwavering commitment to courage, manifested personally and through your establishment of the Center for Institutional Courage, and because of the many ways you have inspired others to be courageous, wise, and compassionate, upon the recommendation of the faculty and with approval of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University, we confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. All right, congratulations again, Jennifer, for all the work you've done. So exciting to have you here with us today. Much deserved honorary degree. Proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, proud of you. Okay. Before we celebrate today's candidates who have completed their studies and other requirements to earn their degrees, I want to pause and recognize three among our cohort who are not here today. Three PhD students in the School of Education Studies who passed away during the course of their studies. We'll honor their memory and their contributions to our university community by awarding them the doctoral degrees that they diligently pursued. I invite Provost Michelle Bly, and again, Chair of the Faculty, Kat Pick, to please come to the podiums for the, this presentation, and I ask that Dean DeLacy Ganley and Professor Francis Gibson join me 
at the lower stage. Thank you, President Jessup. Today, we have some very special guests among us, members of the families of Brian Brown, Hector Preciado, and Bob Westgate. When your name is called, will you please come forward? Will Zelodius Washington please join us? Zelodius, this diploma and hood confer the title of Doctor of Philosophy upon your partner, Brian Brown, an accomplished scholar and valued member of the Urban Leadership Doctoral Program. Brian was a servant leader whose approach to life was inspired by his research subject, African American school board member Faye Allen, a pioneering advocate for equity well before the Civil Rights Movement. The School of Educational Studies and the entire CGU community were enriched by Brian's presence. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for allowing us to honor Brian this way. I now, yes, please. I now ask Francis Gibson and President Jessup to present the hood and diploma. Will Paul Preciado please join us? Paul, this diploma and hood confer the title of Doctor of Philosophy upon your father, Hector Preciado. Your father was determined to be the first in his family to earn a doctorate. His colleagues in the Urban Leadership Cohort were inspired by his desire to honor his parents and be a role model for you and your siblings. The School of Educational Studies and the entire CGU community were enriched by his presence. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for allowing us to honor Hector in this way. I now ask Professor Francis Gibson and President Jessup to present the hood and diploma. Will Jessica Westgate Gould please join us? And I ask that Bob Westgate's faculty advisor, Professor Tom Lushai, join us as well. <laughs> Jessica, this diploma, diploma in hood confer the title of Doctor of Philosophy upon your husband, Bob Westgate. With his enthusiasm and humor, Bob brightened every room he entered. His intelligence, knowledge, kindness, and lifelong commitment to educational improvement made him an exemplar of our Urban Leadership PhD program. The School of Educational Studies and the entire CGU community were enriched by his presence. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for allowing us to honor Bob this way. I now ask Professor Tom Lushai and President Jessup to present the hood and diploma. Thank you, Provost Bly, and Dean Ganley, and Professor Gibson, Professor Lushai, for presenting these three posthumous doctorates. And thanks to the families for joining us. I now ask that we pause for a moment in silence for the memory of Brian and Hector and Bob.
Thank you. We now turn to the awarding of the degrees to the candidates present. To all of you, again, offer my hearty congratulations. And to award the degrees you've earned, we shall proceed in the following way. First, we'll present candidates as a group, and then we'll confer all the doctoral and master's degrees. Then we'll ask each graduate to come forward to the stage to be recognized individually. May I ask Provost Bly to present the candidates for the various degrees. Thank you. Well, the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Public Health, please rise and remain standing. Mr. President, I present the candidates for the doctoral degree, the highest earned degree of Claremont Graduate University. Thank you, Provost Bly. By granting you this degree, the university signifies its confidence that you have made an original and important contribution to human knowledge and that you will continue a life of scholarship that benefits humankind. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the approval of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University, it is my privilege to confer upon you the doctoral degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto and welcome you to the ancient and venerable community of scholars. Congratulations to you all. Well done. Congratulations, and will the candidates for the, for the doctoral degree please be seated now until we will call you forward to be recognized individually. Will the candidates for master's degrees please rise and remain standing. Mr. President, I present our candidates for master's degrees. Thank you, Michelle. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with approval of the Board of Trustees of Claremont Graduate University, it is my privilege to confer upon you the appropriate master's degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to you all. Well done. Will the candidates for master's degrees please be seated until we call you forward to be recognized individually. At this time, I invite President Jessup to step forward as we honor our individual degree recipients. Doctoral candidates, as the marshals instruct you to do so, please come forward to be recognized individually. And will the faculty from the Department of Botany please come forward to the hooding area and be prepared to hood your doctoral candidates. And from the Department of Botany, we have Robert Camito, Doctor of Philosophy in Botany. Congratulations, and will the faculty of the Department of Botany please be seated? Will the faculty from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences please come forward to hood your doctoral candidates as they approach the podium?
from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, we celebrate William Joseph Seeley, Doctor of Philosophy and Mathematics. And also from the department, uh, or, sorry, the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Nathan Schroeder, Doctor of Philosophy in Mathematics. <laughs> Elsa Harris, Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering and Computational Mathematics. Ibrahim Muhammad Ali, PhD in Engineering and Computational Mathematics. <laughs> Sunny Lee, Doctor of Philosophy in Mathematics and Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Will the faculty from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences please be seated? And can I welcome to the stage the faculty from the School of Community and Global Health to come forward please to hood your graduates individually. All right, from the School of Community and Global Health, Josephine Akabunla Putio, Doctor of Public Health. <laughs> Charles Tran, Doctor of Public Health. Amelia Vega, Doctor of Public Health. <laughs> Haula Gamudi, Doctor of Public Health. Jennifer Thayer, Doctor of Philosophy in Health Promotion Sciences. <laughs> Douglas Adifukoa, Doctor of Public Health. Amy Nicole Kuhn, Doctor of Public Health. <laughs> F 
Farah Masood, PhD in Health Promotion Sciences. Virla Miesta Manicas Virgo de Dios, Doctor of Public Health. And will the faculty from the School of Community and Global Health please be seated? And may I invite the faculty from the Center for Information Systems and Technology please to come forward to the hooding area to recognize your graduates. We will now present the candidates from the Center for Information Systems and Technology. And I'm pleased to, to congratulate Juanita Ruth Dawson, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. Whitney Marina Kotluski, PhD in Information Systems and Technology. William P. Wagner IV, PhD in Information Systems and Technology. <laughs> Ala Adharthi, PhD in Information Systems and Technology. Felipe Negrito, PhD, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. Namir Asolami, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. <laughs> the the Watsorn Suktai, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. M.D. Monar Az Zaman, Ph.D. in Information Systems and Technology. <laughs> Cynthia Cindy Chang, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology.
Vanessa Arias Casillas, Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. Awad Abalawi, PhD in Information Systems and Technology. <laughs> Clement Trimenzi Aladi. Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Technology. Thank you. Will the faculty from the Center for Information Systems and Technology please be seated? And can I welcome to the podium the faculty from the Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences to please come forward to hood your graduates individually. From the Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences, Ajit Singh Man, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. Catherine Elizabeth Nylon, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. <laughs> Haley Eumanns, PhD in Psychology. Jessica Ranger, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. <laughs> Natalie D. Jones, PhD in Psychology. Michael Coleman, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Jamila Delane Isaiah Bryant. PhD in psychology. <laughs> Kathleen Patricia McKinley, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. Purva Orchid Rajan Sharma, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> J. 
Jackie Scheib, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. Courtney Coltar, Doctor of Psych Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Aston Attaway, PhD in Psychology. Megan Elizabeth Blackard, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Anne Bradford, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. Jennifer Pacheco Villalobos, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Jackie Gaffney, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. Christopher Matthew Chow, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Alyssa Birnbaum. Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. Vicky Cabrera, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. <laughs> Manisha Mabuzadi, PhD in Psychology. Ju Young Lee, Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology. Elvin Yao, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology.
And will the faculty from the Division of Behavioral and Organizational Sciences please be seated so we can welcome to the stage the faculty from the School of Educational Studies to come forward and hood their students individually. I now present the candidates from the School of Educational Studies. Steve Reyes, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Gloria E. Page, PhD in Education. Christina Joy Ryan Rodriguez, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Laura Elizabeth Wells, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Kiana Nicole Davis, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Jonathan Carter Lee, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Kyle Perez Robinson, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. <laughs> Lakrisha Fennell, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Alexis Nicole Thrower, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Cleon M. McLean, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Chia Shanna Herr, PhD in Education.
Steve Anthony Pell, Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Lavanya Jawaharlal, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Shine Kim, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Brianne Lucien Mudrick, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Alita Ray Mir, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Mrs. Jacqueline Jackie Rangel, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Jennifer Lynn DaCosta, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Andrea Perez Cayosa, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Kamani Smith, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Hector Macias, PhD in Education, Urban Leadership. <laughs> Reginaldo Robles, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Edward Flores, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. <laughs> Monica Ogu Perkins, PhD in Education.
Janelle Adriana Nila, PhD in Education. And will the faculty of the School of Educational Studies please be seated? And I would like to welcome to the podium the faculty from the Division of Politics and Economics. Would you please come forward to hood your candidates individually? We now honor the Division of Politics and Economics, Yuzhu Ziang, Doctor of Philosophy and Political Science. Ted Jones Richards, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science. Arham Lemucci, Doctor of Philosophy in International Politics and Political Science. Sharam Arshadnijad, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science. <laughs> Nazif Sali, Doctor of Philosophy in International Politics and Political Science. Nasir Khalil, Doctor of Philosophy in Economics. Ben Feingold, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. Spencer Mueller, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. Michael Krauss, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. Annie Ya 
Ching Zhang, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. G.A. Yu, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. <laughs> Jennifer Cervantes, Doctor of Philosophy and Political Science. Dr. Francis Joseph Asenga, PhD in Economics and International Politics and Political Science. <laughs> Charles Chaying Sing Chen, Division of Politics and Economics, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science and Economics. <laughs> Paul Christopher Bogart, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science. Benjamin Smith, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. <laughs> Anuar Asamadavnov, PhD in Economics. Chen Huang, Doctor of Philosophy in Economics. <laughs> Kitia Rach, Thana Kornmung Kanchonchai, Doctor of Philosophy in Economics. Wei J, PhD in Economics. <laughs> Sean G. Matosian, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science, Doctor of Philosophy in Education. Insian No, PhD in Political Science and International Studies. <laughs> Ibrahim Al Sohibani, Doctor of Philosophy and Political Science. Eric Russell Koykendall, Doctor of Philosophy and Political Science. Yeah. 
Bing Hsu, PhD in International Politics and Political Science. Muhammad Sulman Khaled, Doctor of Philosophy and Economics. Afra Ali Al Nuami, Doctor of Philosophy in Economics, International Politics, and Political Science. Ratnapala Katakolia Gamaji, PhD in International Politics and Political Science. <laughs> Kaiyuan Chen, Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. Thank you to the faculty in the Division of Politics and Economics. Would you please be seated? And I would like to welcome to the stage the faculty from the School of Arts and Humanities. from the School of Arts and Humanities. Katrina Denman, Doctor of Philosophy and History. Alicia Ali Boyce, Doctor of Philosophy and Cultural Studies. Ben Spackman, Doctor of Philosophy in Religion. Amiri Manzili, Doctor of Philosophy and Cultural Studies. Tiara Robinson, Doctor of Philosophy and Cultural Studies. <laughs> Samin Jodat, Doctor of Philosophy and Cultural Studies.
Rebecca Beverly Call, Doctor of Philosophy and Religion. Retha Leonard, Doctor of Philosophy in English. <laughs> Stephen Newbold, Doctor of Musical Arts. Susan Elizabeth Barnes, Doctor of Musical Arts. Rhonda Lynn Bauer, Doctor of Musical Arts. Peter Ishmael Huerta, Doctor of Musical Arts. <laughs> Pinfei Tang, Doctor of Musical Arts. Anna Barnutu, Doctor of Musical Arts. Lisa Janine Brent Matthews, PhD in History, Wilfred Joseph Doucet the Third, PhD in Political Studies. <laughs> Fatma Al Sohibani. Doctor of Philosophy in Religion. <laughs> Sarah Lillian Jane, Doctor of Philosophy in Cultural Studies. Malcolm Oliver II, Doctor of Philosophy in English. <laughs> Dr. 
Dorivo Pido Nascimento, PhD in Philosophy and Religion. Will the faculty of the School of Arts and Humanities please be seated? We will now recognize the recipients of the Masters of Fine Arts degree. Will the faculty from the art department please step forward to hood your students as they approach the podium. Matthew Odon Erod, Master of Fine Arts. Justin Martin Gonzalez, Master of Fine Arts. Jonathan Godinas Davila, Master of Fine Arts. Jason Dobler, Master of Fine Arts. <laughs> Albert Kiyuhun Chui, Master of Fine Arts. Fell Nicola McCoy, Master of Fine Arts. Aaron D. Baldoon, Master of Fine Arts. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, Master of Fine Arts. <laughs> Michelle Lum, Master of Fine Arts. Alexis St. John, Master of Fine Arts. Janine DeMarco, Master of Fine Arts. Tara T. Tavi, Master of Fine Arts. Woo! 
Melinda Badillo Carrero, Master of Fine Arts. Hugo Salazano Chavez, Masters in Community Engaged Education and Social Change. We now want to recognize three candidates who are not able to be here in person. They are joining us remotely, and it is our pleasure to acknowledge their achievement. We acknowledge the following degree recipients. Evelyn Gudo, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Yannick Leno, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Saida Kadem Hajijinan, PhD in Engineering and Computational Mathematics. Please join me in congratulating them. At this time, we would like to honor our individual master's degree recipients. Will Board Chair Tim Curley please join President Jessup and will Chair of the Faculty, Katerina Pick, please come forward to the podium. When the marshals instruct you to do so, will the candidates for the master's degree please come forward to be recognized individually. Fabian Ariel Carbacho, Masters of Arts in Education. Selena Venko, Master of Science in Botany. Julia Griffin Thomason, Masters in Teacher Education. Joy Shin, Master of Science in Mathematics. Saron Itai Gonzalez, Master of Arts in Education. Riley Weaver, Master of Science in Statistics and Machine Learning. Alyssa Palos, Master of Arts in Education. B.E. Dunn Yue, Master of Science in Financial Engineering. Brianna Christine Aniana Keenan, Master of Arts in Education. Raj Singh Sahuni, Master of Science in Computational and Applied Mathematics. Jeanette Martinez, Master's in Education. Holden James Anderson, Master of Science in Mathematics, Master of Arts in Education. Alyssa Nicole G, Master of Arts in Education. Kareem Powell, Master of Science in Financial Engineering. Gabriella Celeste Dillard, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Kazuhiro Takazawa, Master of Business Administration. Kaylee Lee, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Lillian Amy Hoyos Vences, Master of Business Administration. Trina Nguyen, Master of Arts in Education. Rihan Amira Ali, Masters in Management. Rudy Gamaliel Amaya, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Gina Marie Sandoval, Executive MBA. Alejandro Gonzalez, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. 
Godwins Ade Agbude, Master of Arts in Leadership. Ryan Cisneros, Masters of Arts in Teacher Education. Angela Palayo Prescott, Master of Arts in Leadership. Stephanie Samantha Adams Rios, Masters of Arts in Community Engaged Education and Social Change. Kristen K. Samulin, Master of Arts in Art and Arts Management. Katrina Jean Jacobs, Master of Arts in Community Engaged Education and Social Change. Dahlia Lolina Baresem, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Rachel Morrison, Master of Arts in Education. Thorna O'Connell, Master of Science in Finance. Jennifer Arguita, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Ainsley Grace Basic, Master of Business Administration. Christina Castillo, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. <laughs> Mohammed Kuli Bali, Master of Management. Catherine Shepard Gallimore, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Adam Camargo, Master of Arts in Management. Brenda Jeanette Acuna, Master of Arts in Education. Mason Radkovich, Masters in Management. Ms. Janet Zulo, Master of Arts in Education. Roman Fernandez, Master of Business Administration, Master of Public Health. Alyssa Janae Ramirez, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Natasha Panjaitan, Master of Business Administration. Juana Fernandez, Master of Arts in Education. Layla Abdullahi Amin, Master of Business Administration. Michelle Lopez, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Jessica Marine, Master of Public Health, Master of Business Administration. Angelica Mendez Sanchez, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Monica Avula, Master of Business Administration, Master of Public Health. Sarah Emma C.C. Bowling, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Ivy Rivas, Master of Business Administration. Jasmine Genevieve Montalvo, Master of Arts in Education. Jamila Haji, Master of Business Administration. Vivian Camille Alvarez, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Jocelyn Perez, Master of Business Administration. Mary Carmen Montañez, Master of Arts in Education. Katrina Saria, Master of Business Administration. Afaf Igbaria, Master of Arts in Education. Rachel Mercado, Master of Business Administration. Maribel Escobedo Perez, Master of Arts in Education. Bing Chian Lee, Master of Science in Finance. Alejandra Ramirez Ayala, Master of Arts in Education. Madison Pei, Master of Business Administration. Sophia Sarah Lorraine Zaragoza, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Jessica Nicole Smith, Masters of Business Administration. Francisca Vargas, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Yushuan Tseng, Master in Business Administration with Innovative System Design. Maria Vargas, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Jing Jing Chen, Master of Business Administration. Luis Enrique Medina Barrera, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Julian Corpus, Master of Business Administration. Erica Elizabeth Cabrera, Master of Arts in Education. 
Justin Cole Pratt, Master of Arts in Management. Christine Shim, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Xingwen Fen, Master in Business Administration with Innovative System Design. Sarah Elizabeth McReith Reynolds, Master of Arts in Education. Joshua Engel, Master of Arts in Management. Elizabeth Feldman, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Robert Patrick McLogan, Master of Business Administration. Sierra Morongo Dura Baguio, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Andrew Eugene McSclero, Master of Arts in Management. Malinali Saera, Master of Arts in Teacher Education. Jose Cruz Ramirez, Master of Business Administration. Kelsey Villacorte, Master of Arts in Psychology. Thomas Lawton Munson, Master of Business Administration. Daniel Alfred Palafox, Master of Arts in Psychology. Charles Coleman, Master of Business Administration. Ms. Tareem Rafat, Master of Arts in Psychology. Anika Shamkant Wani, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology, and Master of Business Administration. Catherine Chase Emery, Master of Arts in Psychology. V. Wynn, Master of Business Administration. Emily Isabel Zavala, Master of Arts in Psychology. Ali Kasfi, Master of Business Administration. Daniel Brown, Master of Arts in Psychology. Jonathan Jordan Jackson, Master of Business Administration. Thomas Evan Trinell, Master of Arts in Psychology. Estefany Sofia Vitella, Master of Business Administration. Max Franz Ginsberg, Master of Arts in Psychology. Patricia Jane Martinez, Master of Business Administration. Song Shui, Master of Arts in Psychology. Joya Salas, Master of Business Administration. Shani Benjamin, Master of Arts in Psychology. Elena Yao, Executive Master of Business Administration. Madeline Jean Peterson, Master of Arts in Psychology. Jason Thomas Souza Esquire, Master of Business Administration. Carmen Alade Wilson, Master of Science in Evaluation and Applied Research. Lizette Betancourt, Master of Arts in Leadership. Alexis Diaz, Master of Arts in Psychology. Anushka Bandari, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Noaloni Lee, Master of Science in Evaluation and Applied Re Research. Catherine Cloward Smith, Master of Arts in Religion. Cassandra Olajumoke, Masters of Science in Evaluation and Applied Research. Violet Luxton, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Ms. Najia Shah, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Benjamin Shayan Momtahan, Master of Arts in English. Leo Sam Brown, Master of Arts in Psychology. Emily Michelle Laleda, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Timon Karsten Guslicki, Master of Arts in Psychology. Nada Fakhredin, Master of Arts in Art.
Sophie Cilio, Master of Arts in Psychology. Chansonique Charmaine Taylor Callahan, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Kay Learn, Master of Arts in Psychology. Cameron Abilla, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Mari Torgerson, Master of Arts in Psychology. Crystal Wu, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Minha Khan, Master of Arts in English, Master of Arts in Psychology. Connie Mendoza, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Hannah Bachinger, Master of Arts in Psychology. Emma Jo Spencer, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Miyu Shito, Master of Arts in Psychology. Devin Sprague Lyons, Master of Arts in Arts Management, Master of Business Administration. Anastasia Madi Kamilishka, Master of Arts in Positive Health Psychology. Alan Havison, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Tiffany T. Shao, Master of Arts in Psychology. Zoe Olivia Scott Goss, Master of Arts in History and Archival Studies. Ms. Alejandra Gaetan, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Oscar Rene Guerrero Alvarado, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Brittany Perborse, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Cheryl Mackenzie Eastman, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Jasmine Yvette Nunoz, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Alexa Loren Edwards, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Justine Adriana Soto, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Julieta Magana Perez, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Andrew Carter Cantor, Master of Science in Human Resource Management. Rebecca Soto, Master of Arts in Arts Management. Sam Gardner, Master of Arts in Psychology. Michael Corbin, Master of Arts in English. Christopher Falco, Master of Arts in Psychology. Sabrina Nesbitt, Master of Arts in English. Katherine Richards, Master of Arts in Psychology, Masters in Public Health. Nirupama Parmar, Master of Arts in English. Natalie Amanda Akins, Master of Public Health, Master of Arts in Psychology. Madison Crystal Rosals, Master of Arts in English. Viksha Sumaki Balusa, Master of Arts in Psychology. Molly Stankowski, Master of Arts in English. Alexis Watkins, Master of Arts in Psychology. Alex Flores, Master of Arts in English. Christian Jacob Campbell, Master of Arts in Economics. Rebecca Renee Donaldson, Master of Arts in Applied Gender Studies. Daniel James Tate, Master of Arts in Economics. Summer Runyon, Master of Arts in English. Lucine Carapetion, Master of Arts in Economics. Christian Kyle Garcia, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Natalie Alkir, Master of Arts in Economics. Ruth Diane Manzanares, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Shu Him Murphy Lee, Master of Arts in Economics. 
Ziana Weston, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Heel Wan, Master of Arts in International Studies. Maria de Jesus Sanchez, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Ezekiel German Asensio, Master of Arts in Economics. Marisol Cecilia Garcia, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Juanita Cifuentes, Master of Arts in Economics. Sarah Danielle Medina, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. Edward Segura Tinoco, Master of Arts in Economics. Jeremiah Gordon, Master of Arts in Cultural Studies. John Andrew Phillips, Master of Arts in Politics. Jean Jing Wong, Master of Public Health. Julian Yanel, Master of Science in Applied Data Science. Sabrina Eva Pietrua, Master of Arts in Positive Health Psychology. Natalie Gracia, Master of Science in Applied Data Science and International Studies. Aparna Jain, Master of Public Health. Zihanan Huang, Master of Science in Applied Data Science and International Studies. Edgar Sanchez Macias, Master of Public Health. Shirley Ayamba, Master of Arts in Economics. Amanda Yvette Sanchez, Master of Public Health. Lishan Lonina Naisho, Master of Arts in International Political Economy. Jennifer Kulanthaivelo, Master of Public Health, Master of Business Administration. Sri Hersit Pratipati, Master of Science in Global Commerce and Finance. Erika Galdames, Master of Public Health. Kusturi Gavili, Masters of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Zujaja Terim, Master of Public Health. Shardad Chudru, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Cameron James Ariaga, Master of Public Health. Christina White, Masters of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Dr. Alexandra Lopez Vera, Master of Public Health. Karen Van Coomer, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Laura Lynn Harlow, Master of Arts in Positive Health Psychology. Nicholas Michael Coletta, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Selin Huang, Master in Public Health. Suyen Ho, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Lin Gu, Master of Public Health, Master of Psychology. Francis Asamani, Master of Science Information Systems and Technology. Eilish Patricia Gedstad, Master of Public Health. Mohammed Saik, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Caitlin Bashand, Master of Public Health. Hunter Sayre, Master of Science, Information Systems and Technology. Parzan. Fari Adani, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Okay. Mansi Alsamara, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Abu Latif Almuraj, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Mohammed Al Johani, Master of Systems, Information Systems and Technology. 
Ahmed Ali Azmari, Master of Systems, Information Systems and Technology. Patrick Watkins, Master of Science, Information Systems and Technology. Richard Caballero, Master of Science, Information Systems and Technology. Maria Assumpta Kormujabi, Master of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Richard Andrew Ofdahl, Master of Science, Information Systems and Technology. Congratulations to all of our graduates today. Congratulations, class of 2024. Okay. Well, as well, let's. Hey, congratulations to our graduates again. Well done. And to the faculty behind us who got us here, and, and all the staff. I'm seeing Dana and Cindy. Let's thank them for helping to put the event on for us today. As this commencement ceremony winds down, we come to an important tradition: the charge to this year's graduates. Our speaker this year is the president of our Alumni Association Board, Steve Kim. Steve, would you please make your way down to the podium? Steve is one of CGU's all-stars. He was a founding member of our Alumni Association, a long record of giving back to our community and creating environments where others can give back as well. The founder and principal at TalentScope, Steve helps companies achieve their potential by aligning their business with their purpose. Very Drucker-esque. Sounds a lot like our Drucker School of Management, which is not surprising because Steve earned his MBA and Master's in Advanced Management there. Steve, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Lynn, and of course, uh, for your dedicated service and, and selfless leadership. All right, congratulations, graduates. We're gonna get you out of here in just a few minutes so that you can continue the festivities. Uh, it's an honor on behalf of the CG Alumni Association and Board of Directors to welcome you into our alumni community family of over 23,000 alumni across all of the schools and institute and center that comprise CGU. You know, the CG Alumni Association was founded just a little over six years ago, so we're still in our early stages, and this uh, fledgling community is only as strong as those of us who choose to stay connected. And one of the ways that we can do that is, of course, through our various alumni events that we host throughout the year. One major alumni event that I'd like you to mark your calendars for is February the 22nd, 2025, our second alumni summit. Come back and enjoy, connect with your fellow alumni right here at Garrison Theater and enjoy an opportunity to celebrate, again, your achievements that you achieved so far. The first one that we held was in February of 2020, around the theme of flourishing, right before the pandemic started to shut things down. And this year, this time around, it's gonna be around the theme of unity. And in a world fraught with growing divisions, this event will provide much needed inspiration, speakers, keynote speakers, panel discussions as a way to bring the world together. One of the things that I think about today, when I think about the CGO flame that represents the pursuit of justice, knowledge, and truth, reflecting the message of our motto, multa lumina, una lux, many lamps, one light. I've always wondered what that one light could mean to us individually and collectively. Baha'u'llah, the founder and prophet of the Baha'i faith, I believe spoke of that one light as the light of unity. And in 1891, he wrote, so powerful is the light of unity, it can illuminate the whole earth. And indeed is the man today who arises 
to the service of the entire human race. So perhaps each of us in our own way as we carry the flame forward can serve as one of these many lamps and shine that line of unity for the betterment of society and the greater good. Today we are also united, united in celebration with your fellow graduates, loved ones, family, friends, and those that support you along your journey. And yes, you did it. You're awesome. You persevered till the end. And once again, on behalf of the CG Alumni Association, congratulations, graduates of 2024. All right, thank you, Steve. Good job. Uh, before I congratulate the class of 2024 one final time and conclude the ceremony, I ask that our banner carriers from each school please come forward and retrieve your school's banner They'll, as they make their way up. This is a significant honor. I'm going to point out one. Juanita Dawson, a member of our Board of Trustees, is carrying the banner for our Center of Information Systems and Technology, where she got her PhD today. Congratulations, Juanita. <laughs> Members of the class of 2024, I want to remember, I'd like you to remember something important. Your involvement with CGU does not end with commencement. You'll always be a part of our community. We invite you to join us and our entire CGU alumni community in sustaining CGU, a university that makes the world a better place through its incredible research, teaching, and practice, transformational graduate education. As we begin the commencement recessional, I ask the audience members to please remain seated Keep the aisles clear to let the platform party and the graduates exit. And for the graduates, let's let the platform party go by, then graduates will exit. And you're all cordially invited to participate in the receptions all around campus that are provided for graduates and their guests, each held at the various schools, and they're all listed in the commencement program, so you know where to go. All right, thank you for attending. It is my pleasure to announce that the 97th annual commencement at Claremont Graduate University is now officially closed. Congratulations. Yeah.